Hello, this is Scott. So welcome back to my YouTube channel where I cover data science and analytics topics as well as software, both commercial and non-commercial or open source. Today we're talking about open source R and I've got a little series on um, time series and uh, forecasting in R. So this will be a hands-on session. I'll keep it brief. We are continuing on with ARIMA but now we're talking about seasonal ARIMA. So, and we're gonna just do this quick and cover an introduction. So before we talked about ARIMA and we talked about parameterizing PDQ, the autoregressive P and the moving average Q uh, parameters of a model. Now we're talking about a multiplicative model, which was in one of the intros, we had additive models and multiplicative models. This is a multiplicative model, and we refer to the seasonal portion of the model as capital P, capital D, capital Q, and M stands for the seasonal component. Um, if M is 12, we talk about monthly data. Uh, if M is four, would be applicable to quarterly data, et cetera. Uh, one of the things that we're gonna talk about here, we've been using ARIMA SIM to simulate time series and learn from those simulations where we know what model we generated um, and we can uh, look at uh, you know things like autocorrelation functions and partial autocorrelation functions and and since we know what the model is however we can't um, use this function for seasonal arima um, and so i'm going to show you uh, an alternative to do that in uh, in R in R Studio, and we'll we'll be looking at this particular model, a one one one, one 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 four. All right. So going straight into R, I'm going to use continue using Heinemann, and so uh, this library here in the forecast. Now I'm going to use this ARIMA function from Heinemann. Notice this is capital A, not little a. So there is a different function. Um, but this is Hyman's function, and I'm going to create a thousand uh, random uh, normal observations. Here is my my uh, frequency four, which is my M of my model. Again, I'm creating a little uh, one 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 PDQ, um, and then a capital seasonal component of one 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 as well. And then here are my parameters uh, phi. Um, sub one and theta sub one and the seasonal fee of and you see this is capitalized right for the seasonal component capital fee and capital theta so 0.3 and negative 0.2 so let me just execute that and then let's look at the model that we just created so looking down here sure enough I am uh, generating a 1114 here are the coefficients that I've got to generate this this model all right so if I simulate that model into um, a thousand simulations into foo and plot foo then this is what I have so it may be hard especially in the video to see but this is actually uh, quarterly data there's actually uh, a seasonal pattern it's just that I have a large series so what I decided to do is I'm going to create a plot of uh, 1 to 100 and then create the lines for those um, so that you can see the, the chart so we can see the quarterly uh, pattern there within the the, the function now I'm going to uh, fit um, actually I'm going to wait uh, well let me go ahead I I'll go ahead and use this this ARIMA function to fit the model since we fit a random function and then I can see that the model fit uh, works out uh, pretty well we're going to fit another series in, in the next section but uh, you can see that the AIC is a little bit different and the, the model parameters are a bit different, but that um, this this ARIMA uh, function to fit models works really pretty well. Again, I'm fitting a 111 C11, and it picked up that the seasonal component was four. Um, 
with this parameterization. So that's a good thing. Getting ready for next time. Let's just look at European quarterly retail trade and plot that out, see what that looks like using auto plot. And so we've got this plot here of the original uh, series. And then if I um, uh, basically try to fit this series or before, um, excuse me, <clears throat> before I do that, um, let's think about, oh, okay, so this is non-stationary, non right? So uh, we want to do some sort of uh, differencing to get to stationarity. So um, one of the things that I might do is I might uh, create a, or do some differencing. This, this appears that it might be quarterly data. And since I know it's quarterly retail trade, um, that's probably a good suspicion. So once I execute that, um, I've, I've differenced the first time uh, with order four. And so I'm, looks like I'm getting closer to stationarity, but I have some trends, right? Um, and I can look at the, the autocorrelation function. Sure enough, this kind of looks like a, a, a AR1 or 2 with the pattern, probably AR1 with the this differencing, um, excuse me, this exponential decay of the autocorrelation function, rho. All right, so this is going down. So what I may want to do, and then, well, in the pack F, the partial autocorrelation auto function as well, I've got a spike at, at one um, as well. So what I may want to do is I may want to difference this again. So second, second differencing. And I can do that with this command right here. I can take this uh, data set. I'm going to difference. Uh, the way I did before with lag four, and then I'm also going to difference um, by default. This would be uh, first order differencing. So let me do that real quick. And when I do that, um, I get something that looks a little bit better. Um, I've got something going on here, um, and we'll pick it up next time. Um, but this this series certainly looks a much more stationary than than the previous one. So um, next time we'll be finding an appropriate model for this data. I hope that you can join me then. See you next time.